Hi, it's Susie again. Just hope you're well. Just want to talk about um, the second lesson on cryptocurrencies. We have covered quite a few things in other channels. If you look at new clients and if you look at uh, just general information, but I will put this in the um, client education because I think it's pretty important. Um, crypto markets are like no other markets I've ever seen before. They're certainly like no other traditional markets that I've ever seen. Uh, I've worked in financial markets all my life since 1987 and I worked in the foreign exchange market, the futures market, the bond market, the fixed interest money market, money markets, credit markets and alternative asset markets. Also I have done a bit of structured property as well as property lending. And I guess what I will say is the cryptocurrency market is very, very different indeed. The other markets that I've worked in were all centralized exchanges or they were pretty much over the counter uh, markets and they were all highly regulated, highly regulated by the authorities, whether it be the Reserve Bank of Australia, whether it be ASIC, uh, the Australian Security Institution Commission, or whether it be literally the compliance that was set down by the banks themselves, the banks that I was working for, or the fund manager, or the clients. Um, and, and then also there'd be financial advisory type regulation as well as general advice as well as specific advice which was set down by the stock exchange rulings as well. So we were tied into very heavy regulation when we talked to clients um, and also when money came from the client. So there was rulings such as know your client rule, you always had to know your client very well to identify and assess their risk return trade-off and their investment philosophy, whether the product was the right product for that client in terms of their own risk profile, but in terms of, say, for example, their age, there was no point putting them in a product that had a 20-year duration if they were, they were basically 80, things like that, but also to identify the client properly in terms of 100-point check which meant they needed a driver's license, a passport and a Medicare card, but also to identify the client well enough that you knew where the money was coming from. So essentially you had to actually know where the money was coming from. But in the crypto market, it, it's like I said, it's like no other uh, uh, market at all in terms of currency or anything because there is basically no regulation at this stage. Uh, we do find globally there's a very different stance on cryptocurrency markets. For instance, China has banned cryptocurrency trading and uh, asked the exchanges to close down, whereas Japan has embraced cryptocurrency and has heaps of um, you know ATMs for Bitcoin around uh, and other countries, uh, some embracing it, some, some are not. So it's a very bipolar view at the moment of the cryptocurrency market. I just want to... <coughs> Excuse me. Just want to give you an idea of this, the size of the cryptocurrency market at the moment. It's a very, very small market. Less than one percent of the global population know about the cryptocurrency market at this stage. So um, we sort of think it's probably somewhere between 15 to 20 million people that know about the crypto market, outside of um, a 7.1 billion population. So not many people know about the cryptocurrency market. If we talk about, say, the FX market, the FX mark, market just on daily settlement figures is basically 5.3 trillion, which is huge. If we talk about the um, foot, uh, futures market, we're looking at about 437 billion. If we look at the total global equity market, uh, including the Dow and the S&P, we're talking 64 trillion. And if we look at the bond market, the total global bond market, it's 100 trillion. So the crypto market as of uh, the 6th, 7th of November 2017 uh, is basically only 196.87 billion. So it's very, very small and not many people know about the cryptocurrency market. And a lot of people in that market at the moment are young people, they're around 25, they tend to be young males and they haven't experienced any other market and they certainly haven't experienced markets that have gone down. <laughs> So it is a very, very different market in that stage. Um, going forward, the regulatory rules we have in other markets, and certainly in Australia we have some very strong regulatory rules when we talk about the stock market and retail clients. Um, we have the, can, the Cash Transaction Regulatory Act, which is um, a byproduct of the Patriots Act in the US, where basically it's regulation that we, as a dealer or a financial advisor, have to know the source of the money. 
so where the source of the money is coming from the client we have to exactly know where that source of money is coming from before we took on before we uh, take on an investment um, from a client uh, very important and um, also within that act if there's any sort of suspicion in terms of um, you know that the money's come from you know um, uh, uh, you know sort of it's money that might have come from terrorism or it might have come from prostitution or it might have come from suspicious uh, you know fraudulent activities we have to report that as a stockbroker you have to report that to the uh, cash transactions regulatory body and also um, if there's a cash transaction over ten thousand dollars the banks have to report that even if there's a cash transaction between you know between two thousand or one thousand but it's it's regular and it, it seems suspicious then you as a dealer as an equity dealer you have to report that or as a financial advisor dealer so pretty much the penalties are severe in terms of any other market whether it be FX whether it be equity markets bond markers also if there was insider trading there's severe penalties also um, in terms of debt prospectuses and equity prospectuses which in the bond market and the equity market for any business to get funded by debt or equity or property the the prospectuses have to be true and no falsity in those in those documents they're basically audited by auditors and whoever writes those prospectuses better whether it be responsible agents of the business or the company secretary or the like who signed them off or directors they are personally liable for those prospectuses so uh, in terms of financial statements or any sort of projections or any sort of statements in the cryptocurrency market we don't see any of that there are no rules no regulations so effectively um, someone that's looking to get financing out of the cryptocurrency market can basically say anything can effectively um, you know make wild claims about what they're going to do in the future it's all this and but and if um, they don't have any due care or any responsibility to the investor or the trader or the speculator they're, and they're not liable for anything so there's no fines there's no corporate watchdog like ASIC Australian Securities Investment uh, Committee um, and effectively the director or the representation representation of the company can pretty much say anything because there is no regulation or compliance also what's important in the cryptocurrency market when a, uh, a white paper is done which is obviously a, a draft of what they intend to do with the initial coin offering which is their funding uh, you know what they intend to do with the money the white paper is not audited so what happens when startups come to the cryptocurrency market they look to do an initial coin offering no different to what uh, you would do in the equity market and you'd call it an initial public offering the difference is the white paper that comes to the market which outlines uh, what they want to do uh, which outlines the startup and why they need the money in terms of the technology um, will often you know be flimsily in the way it's outlined and flimsily in the way it talks about the business there's no stats or anything or no financials and basically it's all on hearsay hearsay so effectively the directors or the responsible bearers bear no responsibility or uh, for false claims or anything and sometimes there is no white paper outlining the details of the startup business and the technology that's going to be used um, and there may not even be any program going forward there may not be any key performance indicators there may be no comment on how they're going to spend the money so the cryptocurrency market it is new yes Bitcoin came in 2009 but the reality is uh, literally it sounds like to me from what I can see anyone can come to this market do an ICO there doesn't seem to be any regulation uh, if they tell the investor lies uh, if they tell the investor lies in terms of the, the white paper or if they don't there doesn't seem to be any due care or any sort of diligence and it seems to me that they can just literally ask for the money and walk away because there is no protection so I think uh, investors and would-be traders need to be really aware of that it also seems to me that in the cryptocurrency market investors are coming to this market because it's an easier way to get funding than the traditional banks uh, I if you went to a bank you want to borrow money you know get a loan you'd have to supply all different paperwork all different documents you would have to supply business plan uh, projections of uh, business revenue and expenses that certainly doesn't happen in the cryptocurrency market with initial coin offerings you don't see any of that paperwork or any of that documentation at all so essentially um, 
it just really means that people that do come to the ICO market, the cryptocurrency market, uh, it looks like they get things passed in this market because nothing is, is audited, nothing, they don't need any uh, near as much documentation. And it looks like um, that they get knocked back in the banks on traditional uh, lending. Uh, and they certainly get knocked back in the equity market and the debt market, but but certainly in the um, the initial coin offering, the crypto market, they can get funding at 40 million US quite easily, and no one asks any questions, which I find a very strange market indeed. Uh, so just uh, going forward, it really is you know people are tending to invest in startup risk, and again, how do you price startup risk? The risk of a startup is uh, you know very very hard to ascertain, but also the pricing of startup risk. How do you how do you price up starting risk? So um, in terms of crypto land, there really is no protection of the investor's money and there really is no protection at all for, for anything. So uh, a crypto uh, currency, could, the initial coin offering could be a scam or it may not be a scam. So it really is buyer beware. Honestly, you really need to be careful what you're buying and really know what you're buying because uh, as an investor or as a trader, you don't have a leg to stand on if, if this thing falls over. Um, also, what, what happens also in cryptocurrency land is when uh, uh, a, a company, a startup company gets funding, often there is no separate place where they put that money. So in the debt market or the equity market, if there was an IPO or there was funding, that money would get put into a custodian account or some different account where there'd be a very strong uh, paper outlining exactly how they were going to spend the money and the milestones and exactly the plans, the project and different timelines. So there's nothing in these uh, crypto papers, the ICO papers to tell the investor generally how much they're going to spend on what their timeline, whatever. Some don't even have a timeline. Some don't even have pro, you know, a timeline for their programs or their milestones. So, again, you really need to be careful as a, as a buyer of any of these cryptos. Um, governments, as I said before, ha are having a lot of trouble um, understanding just the technology of crypto technology, but also cryptocurrencies. Uh, because the technology is decentralised, generally uses blockchain, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it avoids governments and banks and everything, and some of the cryptocurrency is private, a lot of governments just don't know how to deal with cryptocurrencies. Some think they're a, a commodity, some think they're a currency. Um, because they are decentralised, they just don't know how to deal with uh, basically legislating for the currency, uh, for the cryptocurrency and the Australian government for example, it has gone to parliament and they just don't know how to deal with it. So we could see you know, some time before there's some sort of legislation on this particular market, which means uh, you know, until then it's a buyer beware market because honestly whatever can be said in those initial coin offering uh, white papers, if there is one, they can literally say anything. So, uh, yeah, again, you've just got to be aware of that. Uh, also, um, certainly investors are drawn to the cryptocurrency market because the gains that have been seen in this market are gains that, that uh, have never been seen in any other markets before. Now, as I said, I've worked in markets for 30 years, since 87. And even in the best years in the stock market and the debt market, it's rare that you get a return of over 20% per annum. But if you've been invested in Bitcoin since 2009, uh, Bitcoin generated something like a return of 46,000% return. So even if you'd had a handful of Bitcoin, you'd be literally a multi-millionaire now. So the returns have been absolutely phenomenal, and they've certainly been absolutely phenomenal on some of the altcoins, which are the other coins apart from Bitcoin in the cryptocurrency market. So just to give you an idea, there's 1,265 coins and tokens in the cryptocurrency market. Uh, the majority of them are startup risk, 95% at least, and as as we know, 95% of businesses fail for for the following reasons, uh, which I'll outline. A lot of these startups also are using Ethereum technology, which does have it's not the best technology. You've got Ripple out there that's got even better technology. They've got capability, they, they've got scalability. Ripple has, and they can process a thousand transactions or two thousand per seconds. A lot of these startups are using Ethereum's technology, which has problems with capacity and storage, and can only manage fifteen transactions per second, even in good times. So the problem is they have to rely on miners to basically validate transactions and process them into the block and then into the blockchain. 
and all the history of the transactions needs to be downloaded on the nodes. And when things get busy, these transactions queue up and they're actually delayed. And what we find is a lot of initial coin offerings that come to the market, like financial market uh, ICOs, where they're saying they're going to build a financial market startup, set up business on a blockchain technology. Uh, it's it's not really relevant for financial markets in, in the sense that Ethereum technology is not really suitable for the processing speed that's required in financial markets. They generally should be using Ripple's processing speed. So what I meant before is when you do find that some of the businesses are trying to get the ICO money, so they're trying to fit their business model to the technology, in this sense, the technology doesn't fit the business. Um, they should be using Ripple technology and not Ethereum technology for financial markets. So again, you know, I would say, you know, buyer beware. When you do look at um, the reason why startup uh, companies fail, and you're basically buying startup companies in ICOs, uh, they are the run out of cash. They basically the market doesn't need it. You know, it's something that's not needed. Um, the right team, um, they get outcompeted. Pricing is an issue. Poor product. Again, poor business model, poor marketing, they ignore customers, lose focus, all those different things. Um, so what I'm, I'm a bit of a skeptic. What I am finding with a lot of the startups that come into the ICO market here, the initial coin offering market, uh, a lot of them are just coming for the money and, and running and um, the investor has no, uh, not a leg to stand on because this money is not even being put in an, into a custody account, which is a real concern. So I guess I just want to highlight those risks. Uh, if you do invest in the cryptocurrency market, there is no protection for you as an investor. And even exchanges have been known to go down. Um, of the cryptocurrency market at the moment, there's 166 exchanges. And one exchange did go down in 2014, Mt. Gox. Um, and that was because some hackers got into the exchange and stole 400 million at the time of Bitcoin and it made the exchange fall over. So the exchanges aren't regulated either. So it is really, really important to, if you do buy any coins, to buy the right ones or the right tokens. Make sure, you know, it's very difficult sometimes, you know, to know if it's a scam, but you've really got to do your due diligence, absolutely. Um, and that's why you pay for a service like mine which, you know, I basically teach people what to look for and, and, and what sort of things to do in terms of due diligence. But when you do uh, obviously buy something, it's important to have a second key being an authenticator for the trading platform. And you can get that it's a second uh, key, which is basically you put in your email, your password, and then there's a second uh, key, which you put in num num uh, uh, numbers, and that will actually get you into the platform. And then also it's really important to choose a complicated password with numbers, capitals and unusual letters like hash and at and the explanation uh, symbol. But also there's also two keys, you get a public key and a private key. The public key is like your account number, the private key is like your PIN number. So you never give your PIN number to anyone. Really important in terms of crypto markets to back up your cryptocurrency holdings on a Ledger Nano S. Uh, if the exchange goes down, you can still move your holdings um, because, you, as I said, your holdings can be taken from the exchange or have your private keys stored in a hard copy or backed up on a, a Legend Nano S. So that's just a little bit of information, re-crypto markets. Just want you to buy, be cautious. It's really good to go into a service like mine because you really need to get as much information as you can. Thanks for now. I hope that helps.